Hello everyone, and in this video we will be taking a look at the Unicomp Ultra Classic, a modern production version of one of the most influential keyboards of all time, the IBM Model M. The IBM Model M was first released in 1984 and would later become the standard keyboard for the PS2 or Personal System 2, IBM's new generation of PCs. Easy! You go to PS2 it! The solution is IBM. In 1991, IBM's keyboard manufacturing division was offloaded to its new subsidiary, Lexmark, out of their factory in Lexington, Kentucky. Keyboard production under Lexmark was ended in 1995 as IBM phased out its older equipment to focus on their other computer lines, such as the Aptiva. Aptiva with Intel Pentium processor. From IBM. Fortunately, in 1996, former IBM and Lexmark employees purchased the Model M design schematics, as well as Lexmark's manufacturing facility at 510 Henry Clay Boulevard in Lexington, where they founded their new company, Unicomp, and continue to produce new Model M's to this day. So, what makes the Model M so special? Firstly, is its use of the widely acclaimed IBM buckling spring switches that it is known for, which I will talk about later in more detail. Secondly, the IBM Model M pioneered the now standard keyboard layout that we all use decades later. So, what if you want to own and use a Model M today? Well, it's quite a bit more complex than you would imagine. Searching for a Model M on eBay reveals many listings. However, almost all of them cost more than $150, and for a unit in especially pristine condition, expect to pay up to $500. And if you take into account some of the Model M's modern inconveniences, such as its exclusive use of the increasingly deprecated PS2-style connection interface, not to mention the fact that the Model M predated Windows 95, so there are no Windows logo or application keys, you would be forgiven for wanting an alternative. Enter Unicomp, the independently run successor to IBM's keyboard division that continues to sell new Model M's using the same overall design, featuring new innovations such as USB interfaces, Windows keys, and a high level of customization. With Unicomp, you get a brand new officially licensed Model M keyboard for a fraction of the price for an original, but it isn't that simple. There are many specific design revisions that all apparently have slightly different characteristics. To my knowledge, the Unicomp keyboards are based on the later batch of Lexmark produced keyboards, and with Unicomp's allegedly dubious quality control, it may be a hard sell for some people. So, as someone who has never used a Model M keyboard, I'll be taking an objective look at Unicomp's offering compared to a traditional keyboard. Let's begin by unboxing a brand new Unicomp Ultra Classic. The Ultra Classic is a new Unicomp specific model, which is to say it was not sold by IBM or Lexmark before 1996. The Ultra Classic is in essence the same feel and layout as the IBM original, but has been significantly slimmed down by removing unnecessary width. The keyboard comes in this nondescript cardboard box. The only thing letting you know of its contents is this Unicomp packing sticker. Opening the box reveals the keyboard. Normally this would be wrapped in plastic, but I already opened it to ensure everything was as it should be, so just ignore this. To remove the keyboard, just remove these side pieces and lift it out. Beneath the keyboard is a Unicomp packing slip, thanking you for your purchase, as well as supplying you with contact information and instructions for removing and reseating keycaps. So here is the Unicomp Ultra Classic, and the first thing I notice is it is really hefty, like <laughs> you could take out an assailant with this. It is that heavy. It's likely due to a uh, metal plate that is underneath the keys, and it feels quite different than I've uh, ever tried because I've spent most of my time with Cherry MX switches, uh, and of course this keyboard I have that I ordered uses uh, this uh, PS2 style connector, although Unicomp does offer USB. Um, I ordered this because I was going to use it with uh, older computers as well, so I wanted that flexibility. 
And I can confirm this inexpensive USB PS2 adapter by Micro Innovations that I purchased for a couple dollars from the source uh, will work perfectly with this keyboard. I'm not sure about original uh, Model M's. So you would just plug in the PS2 right here and then plug the USB into the computer and it will work straight out of the box um, on both Windows and Mac OS. So what we're going to do is take a quick tour with this keyboard, um, give my thoughts on it, and then I would like to compare it to uh, this, which is my daily driver, a Red Dragon K551, which is a rather um, cost-effective Cherry MX Blue keyboard. Uh, very good value for money with this keyboard. And it has the Cherry MX Blue switches, and we'll look at that. So, taking a look at the keyboard, I went with the pearl white and pebble gray scheme for the authenticity to the original. Although its design can be described as predominantly form over function, I think it has a very nice muted professional look. The layout of this keyboard is simply one of the best I've ever used. I purchased the 103 key variant, which gives you a single Windows key rather than two. On the 104 key version, they had to shorten the spacebar to accommodate a second Windows key, which looked cramped in my opinion, whereas the 103 version just added the extra Windows and application keys, where on the original they just had empty space between the control and alt. The layout is very much traditional, hardly any surprise really, considering the keyboard practically invented it. I love the spacing between the different key clusters, such as function keys and the number pad. Another thing I love uh, is the printing on the keys. They are die sublimated, meaning they're inherently durable, but my favorite thing is the typeface itself. Although looking unsurprisingly a bit dated compared to a lot of other modern keyboards, it looks very professional and highly legible. By comparison, the key printing on my Red Dragon uses this typeface. I personally dislike it as it's a bit insensible and isn't particularly legible. For example, the 8 and B look very similar. The worst part of this is the fact that more and more otherwise good keyboards are using this font just so it can look more gamery. I personally dislike this trend and I wish they would go back to the font used by Unicomp. Another hilariously dated feature is this small ledge on the top of the keyboard. It may look like an eyesore, but it serves a practical purpose. This can be used to hold a pencil, or, if you feel like living on the edge, a pen. The original Model M had this, this one has it too, although it's slightly smaller, but it works perfectly. I am very happy it has this. I wish other keyboards included this feature. One odd thing on this keyboard is this strange rectangle right on the front. This is actually a blanking plate for the Endura Pro model, which is the same keyboard with an IBM ThinkPad style track point mouse, itself a spiritual successor to the IBM Lexmark M13. The buttons for this keyboard would be placed here rather than the switch blank present on this model. I do wish Unicomp would adjust their molds to eliminate this, as it looks very cheap and it constantly reminds you that you could have spent a little more money for added features. Moving on to the bottom of the keyboard, which is black for some reason, we have the keyboard's identification tag with the date of manufacture. Mine was made in late October of 2019. We also have some very handy cable management channels to route the cable out either direction. Another feature on the bottom of this keyboard is its two height adjustment feet. They are concerningly flimsy. Just tapping on them makes them rattle. They feel like they could fall off at any time. I contacted Unicomp's amazing customer support about this, and they promised to send me replacements if they ever broke off, but this is still an unfortunate black mark on this keyboard's otherwise stellar build quality. Alright, I've been putting it off, but now it's time to talk about this keyboard switches. As I mentioned, it uses IBM's legendary buckling spring, which uses a tactile spring to actuate a rocker that presses a membrane, bridging contacts, and activating a key press. The typing feel can be best described in my own words as being tactile, yet still possessing a smooth actuation. For comparison, the MX Blue equivalent switches in my Red Dragon are almost entirely tactile and bottom up almost immediately afterward. As well, it is significantly harder to press than any cherry switch. This creates a typing experience that cannot be replicated new anywhere else at any other price. This begs the question, however, 
is the Model M mechanical? This is debated as the actual key press is performed by a membrane, yet the keyboard feels very tactile, much like other completely mechanical switches. In my eyes, it doesn't really matter if it's mechanical or not. I feel that consumers nowadays judge a keyboard not by its actual feel, but whether or not it is mechanical. So otherwise very good keyboards are being called bad solely because they don't conform to a very broad term that doesn't necessarily dictate how a keyboard should feel. The opposite is also true. For example, this keyboard claims to be mechanical. However, I have a suspicion that it's actually just a fairly basic rubber dome switch, but this keyboard seems to be very popular nonetheless. Taking a keycap off, you notice how this keyboard uses double keycaps on some of the keys. They originally used these on every key. This one, for whatever reason, only uses them on the gray colored keys. Taking a look at the actual switch, they do look significantly different compared to regular cherry switches. As you can see, there's a channel that the key fits into, and there's the spring that actuates the mechanism. It's important to note that replacing keycaps takes extra attention. You need to make sure that the spring is positioned properly when installing them, otherwise it may cause the key not to work. As I mentioned, the keyboard comes with printed instructions on how to do this. So. What are my thoughts on the Unicomp Ultra Classic? And more importantly, do I recommend that you buy it? I say that depends. This keyboard is a very interesting case. It doesn't come with all the bells and or whistles like the other keyboards in its price range do, such as media controls and key backlighting. But if you're in the market for an IBM Model M, this would probably be a better purchase. Each one is made new with modern connectivity and Windows and Mac keys. Unicomp offers excellent customer service, and of course, the feel is simply extraordinary. I have heard people having issues regarding Unicomp's build quality, which are completely valid. However, I personally am more than satisfied with this particular keyboard, with the exception of the feet as I mentioned. But Unicomp support is extremely competent and will more than likely take care of any issues you may have. I do believe that Unicomp is definitely improving as they become more and more popular. What I think would be cool is if Unicomp were to create maybe a more gaming-focused Model M, it could be pretty successful with the current retro reboot trend in gaming right now. What follows is a typing demonstration on this keyboard without any commentary. At about the one minute mark, it will switch to the Cherry MX Blue for comparison, and after another minute, we'll switch back to the Unicomp. Enjoy. No, absolutely not.
This concludes my review of the Unicomp Ultra Classic Keyboard. Like, comment, and subscribe. More content is on the way, and thank you very much for watching.